When it comes to keyboard testing, it's important to understand the users that we do this testing for. Our users who may need to use keyboards to navigate our digital tools could have visual impairment or may be physically unable to use a pointing device. It's important that we make sure that the tools we build are accessible for all. Firefox Accessibility DevTools, especially the keyboard testing, helps us do just that. It helps us identify the problem, tells us where it is in the DOM tree, and then gives us suggestions on exactly how we can find and fix the problem. But first, let's look at two common accessibility keyboard testing issues that many of us have when we want to start keyboard testing. For one, how do we set up our computer to actually do keyboard testing? Because by default, Macs actually aren't able to do it, especially in Firefox. So let's take a look at that now. Here I'm on the developer.mozilla.org website and I am looking at a section called Using Native Keyboard Accessibility. And here below we'll see that Firefox for the Mac, it doesn't actually do tabbing by default. So we have to actually turn that on now. So if we follow these instructions and we go to Firefox Preferences, and then we actually head down to browsing and we actually want to make sure that always use the cursor keys to navigate within pages we want to actually make sure that's unchecked that will help us do our keyboard accessibility testing quite smoothly if we make sure it's unchecked step two if you have a mac you want to go to your keyboard settings so let's go to our preferences and we're going to go to keyboard and we're going to go to shortcuts and what we want to make sure is that in all windows that we have the ability to use all controls to press tab to move keyboard focus between elements. Now our computer set up. However, the developers, we always test and we fix all of our issues in every browser. So you also want to go and check Safari as well and follow these instructions for that in addition to uh, Firefox and Mac settings. And now we want to go ahead and start actually navigating throughout our page. So the primary buttons to use during keyboard testing are tab and shift tab. So tab is going to actually go through your page from top to bottom, left to right, whereas shift tab is just going to simply go in reverse. So basically bottom to top, right to left to simplify things. So let's see it in action. We're going to tab through and the first thing we land on is the hamburger menu. Uh, and in terms of accessibility, we're going to just call it a widget for now, since it has um, more elements within it that we can open and navigate through. So we press enter to actually open up the widget, and we're going to continue to tab through. And we want to make sure that all elements are able to be tapped through. And you can continue pressing enter to navigate through the menu. So we're going to press enter to actually close the hamburger menu. Now let's check out the actual accessibility uh, keyboard checker tools. We're going to actually go up into our uh, these two right arrows here, and we're going to go down to accessibility to actually access the accessibility dev tools panel. So they're not on by default because we want to make sure that your browser is always as fast as possible. However, if you'd like to edit those preferences and change that, feel free. Um, but for now, they're off uh, and feel free to turn them off once you're done uh, with your accessibility testing to speed back up your browser and continue that high performance. So we're going to actually turn on accessibility features now. And here we see three specific panels. We see a main accessibility panel here that will tell us the role and the name of an element or elements on the page. And then we also see a checks panel to the right upper hand corner. And then lastly, we have our properties panel. This will tell you things like the name, the role, the value of an element, all these different things that you can help to make your page uh, and your applications and sites much more accessible. Let's check out an issue on our page. Let's see if we can find one. So we're gonna go to check for issues, and then we're gonna go down to keyboard and make sure that that's checked. Let's see if we find anything, and we do. There's one issue here, and the accessible name for this element is your email here. So let's see if we can find that on the screen. Uh, down here, we see that we have a little tooltip telling us that the element is somewhere down here. So let's scroll and see if we can find it. 
So this is our element right here. I'm pretty sure of it, but just to double check, I'm going to go ahead and right click, inspect accessibility properties. And sure enough, it's confirmed that that is the element at hand here with the warning. So now we want to move over to our checks panel and we see that there is one warning for keyboard and a warning for text labels and names. Right now, for the sake of this video, we just want to focus on the keyboard warning that was raised. So our warning says that the focusable element may be missing focus styling. And if we actually go check the element, it does appear to be missing focus styling. But what does that mean and how can we fix it? Firefox offers a tip. Let's find this learn more link and let's click that. And it takes us to this page. Here we can see that it gives us a complete rundown in general on the problem at hand and even offer suggestions on how to actually fix it. So we can see here that if we use the focus CSS pseudo class and just add some styling on that, that'll most likely fix our issue here. Now, if you go ahead and add focus styling in the browser, you might notice if you check for the keyboard accessibility issues again, that the warning is still raised. Fear not, this is still in beta. If that's something that you would like us to do or you think that'd be a really cool feature to add for those live changes to actually be accepted and implemented into the accessibility tree, let us know. For more information on keyboard testing and the Firefox accessibility dev tools, feel free to visit this page. And then if you want more general information on the accessibility inspector tools uh, in the Firefox browser, feel free to visit this page. If you've had any other issues with keyboard testing are interested in a more thorough overview of keyboard accessibility testing, or you're just interested in other accessibility topics, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts.